morning. This is Lacey Rice with KYSports.TV talking to Coach Luke Garnett, head track and field and cross country coach at Georgetown College. How are you doing today, Coach? Doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. It's good. Coach Garnett is in his third year at the helm uh, for Georgetown, and um, he is uh, about to take his troops. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> out to the field here, Reese, uh, or uh, in the near future. One week. One week. One week from today. Okay, and so. Uh, you know, we're, we will definitely be taking a look at Georgetown over the course of this year. Um, so, Coach, um, can you tell us a bit about your uh, your background? Because we do know that you are a, a graduate of Georgetown, that you yes, ran sir. here yourself. And uh, you uh, are another of the coaches who have turned to his alma mater to um, take over the program that he competed in. Yes, sir. So I grew up Harrison County, Cynthia, Kentucky. That's mm -hmm. where I'm from. And... I uh, went and enrolled at Georgetown 2006 and competed all four years, uh, graduated 2010. And from that point forward, uh, for, I think for about five seasons, I was a, a volunteer assistant for four, paid assistant for one under Coach Todd McDaniel, who was my coach. Helped him out for a few seasons, and when he needed to move on, I stepped up into that. So I've been, I guess I've been associated with Georgetown now for 11, 12 years or something. So it's Kind of, kind of weird saying that, but, <laughs> but it's uh, that that's I guess the gist of it there. Uh, when I was in um, undergrad, I was a three-time national qualifier, twice in cross country, one time in track, mm -hmm. and we're hoping to add more people to that list here as I uh, continue forward. Okay, okay. Well, you have um, you have the men and the women. Yes, sir. Up under you, uh, up under you, and. Uh, uh, last year, um, it seems like uh, your women did really, really well. Yes, sir. Um, they were either near the top or at least in the, in the middle of the thick of, of pretty much every meet last year. Yes, sir. They did very, very well. The, the women's team is a little bit ahead of the men right now. Our numbers are a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. uh, the men, we've been rebuilding for a couple of years trying mm -hmm. to get that going. But the, uh, the ladies are benefiting from... Uh, some very we have a very strong scene well last year junior this year senior class mm -hmm. and uh, our men we have a, a good senior junior class leadership but they're mostly track athletes who also run cross country so we have a, we're really young on the men's side and we're mm -hmm. trying to build that up and hopefully roll into get some momentum rolling into the future years okay okay um, now as far as your program um, You've had a lot of success, it seems, especially in the classroom. Yes, sir. With we've, your student athlete. We, we've taken a whole lot of pride in that. We've always had um, very good GPAs as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. We're usually one of the top teams in the uh, uh, in our at Georgetown, I should say, have one of the highest GPAs. It's usually us, and on the women's side, it's usually us and soccer fighting for it. So uh, that's always. Leah and I are always battling there, trying to get that high GPA. Volleyball as well. Mm -hmm. But we've had a lot of success in the classroom. I don't know what it is. It's been that way since I was an athlete. We just, I don't know what it is about distance runners. It's mm -hmm. just one of those oddities. I don't know. But, right. uh, I, we take a whole lot of pride in it. And that's, that's, that's the main reason we're here. And unfortunately, our athletes aren't going to sign multi-million dollar, you know, NBA contracts right out of college. So, or after one year of college. So, mm -hmm. We got to focus on what's really, really important here, and that, that that's one thing I take pride in uh, here at Georgetown. Okay. Well, you yourself um, have a, a bachelor's in mathematics yes, sir. and a master's in statistics. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. I do. And actually, uh, one of my other roles at Georgetown is I'm a, a, a professor, a math professor on campus. So <laughs> during the day, I'm teaching math classes, and in, in the afternoon, well, in the morning, I'm running with the team, and the mm -hmm. during the day I'm teaching classes. And in the afternoon, we're back out running again. So, okay. it's a uh, stay busy. That's for sure. So, um, is it safe to say that quite a few of your athletes have to come through you in the classroom? I, I have had my, <laughs> not counting the freshmen because we just started their 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 time here. But I think I've had almost eighty percent of my athletes in the class at some point. <laughs> Got to take a math prereq at some point. So. 
<laughs> and I do focus most of my teaching, because I'm master's level, I'm not right. PhD. Right. Uh, most of my teaching is the undergrad, or the, un, the lower level math classes like mm -hmm. pre-cal and uh, mm -hmm. intro level statistics and whatnot. So I see a lot of them. And they always think it's going to be the easy out. And more, if anything, I hold them to a higher standard. <laughs> The, we'll be on the bus, like we have a Friday meet, and I, I'll tell them, I was like, you know that homework was due tonight, have you finished it yet? <laughs> and they were like, coach, we're on the bus! It's like, so? <laughs> but that, it's always interesting. It's, a, it's always fun having that, because, right. you, you know, the, 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 they always like it too, because if, if I ever have to cancel class for a meet, which rarely happens, but it's every once in a while, they, they, they don't have to worry about missing class. So right. it always works right. out. Okay, okay. Um, well, how many, uh, roughly how many uh, on the crop, just for cross country? Yes, sir. But how many of them have made uh, all conference so far? Uh, all conference, uh, if you talk about all conference academic, we have over half of them. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about just all conference on, on the uh, uh, course, uh, did we have one last season? Uh, Currently on the team, we usually, we had one or two girls, and I think we have one guy. Mm -hmm. um, and in previous years, we've had more, but that's mm -hmm. what we have currently on the team. Okay. And you and you run in, in a pretty strong conference that has um, oh, teams yes. like University of the Commonwealth and, and and others that you know yeah. have been very Absolutely. strong over the year. They have a uh, Shawnee State is usually oh the, yeah Shawnee yeah. yeah. Preseason rankings just came out. Shawnee mm -hmm. State men's and women's are both in the top ten. Mm -hmm. uh, and Campbellsville's men's team has been mm -hmm. phenomenal. They beat Shawnee State for the first time since Shawnee State entered our conference just mm -hmm. a season or two ago. Uh, so those two teams, Cumberland's is always very strong, and we just introduced in the recent years life on the women's mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. and Cumberland, Tennessee uh, just uh, joined our conference. They're really strong too, so mm -hmm. it's, there, there's, no, there's no easy conference meet for us, that's for sure. It's getting it's stronger and stronger. Even since I ran, mm -hmm. the conference has gotten leaps and bounds better. So, mm -hmm. Like I, I qualified for nationals twice, and mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have qualified last year based off what I ran in college. Uh, that's how much stronger it's got. So it's wow. it's uh, it's awesome. I love seeing that. Okay. It is frustrating though, because I think if I put the team we have now mm -hmm. back a few years ago, we might you know <laughs> we, we we wouldn't be finishing fourth or fifth. We might be second or third or maybe right. win it. But you know it, it, it's good for the sport though. That's the main thing is seeing the progression, especially in this area. Just seeing these small schools just excelling. It's it's awesome. It's really awesome. Okay. So now your uh, your your conference championship at one point um, was hosted by different conference members. Right. Now it's primarily down in Bowling Green. Correct. The last two years it's been in Bowling Green, and this will be the third. Mm -hmm. uh, Shawnee State's hosted it a few times, mm -hmm. and I remember. I mean, we've had it at um, University of Rio Grande. Used mm -hmm. to be in our conference. It's been there. Mm -hmm. So we've been all over the place for it. But the the conference now, almost every championship's held in Bowling Green. So mm -hmm. we're we're heading down there. It's um, uh, Fillmore Park is where it's held. So uh, we run down there. We have a conference preview meet to go mm -hmm. get ready, see the course, run it, and then uh, get ready for it. It's a, it's a nice course. It's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy. There's a couple of nice hills in it. Right. and some alternating terrain, but it's cross country. That's right. what it's all about. So you gotta, it's, it's no, easy, no easy courses for us at conference either, which uh, that, I kind of like that. That's, mm -hmm. that's uh, how I am. A lot of, a lot of teams, a lot of meets, uh, Berea has a home meet that includes, you know, you run through the woods, there's a creek, you know, true cross country course. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of teams are heading towards the, the track on grass type courses mm -hmm. that are just super fast, which is great because you run PRs, but mm -hmm. it takes a little bit out of the sport in my opinion. I like seeing those those true cross country style courses. Cool. Okay. Where it's not about your time, it's more just you're racing. Right? Right. It's kind of cool. cool. Okay. So um, with that uh, with that meet uh, moving down there, mm -hmm. um, is that a faster course than the, some of the courses like the Rio Grande or um, like the Shawnee course? I think it's a little slower than what you'd see at Shawnee. Shawnee uh -huh. was a, a nice course. It was pretty flat, but mm -hmm. you, could, you could run well on it. You could run fast. Mm -hmm. And you can run fast at Fillmore Park. Mm -hmm. uh, but Rio Grande's course actually is fairly comparable because it also had a nice hill mm -hmm. uh, right at the beginning of the course and then you run it again later. Mm -hmm. uh, as it's compared to some of the courses we've been to, it, it's right there in the middle. 
It's not quite as fast as some, but it's not a slow course by any means, in my opinion. Okay. And two, some of it just depends on the weather you get to. Right. So it's a, if it's rainy and wet, it's going to slow you down. Right. Uh, but uh, but it, overall, it's right there in the middle. Okay. And you have some uh, you have some pretty tough meets on your schedule. I noticed I that you do have um, the the meet at Tom Sawyer Park in yes. Louisville. Yes, that's and you, always a huge meet. And you also have the Fast Cats. Mm -hmm. Uh, me. Down in Owensboro, right. The, the Greater Louisville Classic at Tom Sawyer is, if, if it's not the largest cross-country meet in the nation, I don't know what is. It's one of, if not mm -hmm. the. And they always split college races into three divisions, and there might be 50, 60 teams in each division even. Mm -hmm. And that's a very popular course because it's hosted NAI Nationals. I know last year it hosted D3 Nationals, and a few years ago it's hosted D1 Nationals. Mm -hmm. So you always get a very big crowd there whenever it hosts a national meet. And it's just, it's, it's huge. And whether you're in the best, the, the top division, the D1 division, or all the way down, they, it's, it's going to be really competitive and just packed. You know, you're three, four, five, six hundred runners in a single race, which it's, it's, un, it, it, it's a sight. If you've never seen that, if you've never seen the start of a race like Greater Louisville, you've got to find a video on YouTube or something because they are, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful chaos in my opinion. It just, you see all the, and I, I, luckily we're orange. There's not a lot of orange teams out there and I make them wear orange shorts so I can just try to find them in the crowd. Like it's so crazy. But uh, it's always just an awesome, awesome experience there. And Owensboro Fast Cats, we always love going down there. It's uh, um, hosted by Kentucky Wesleyan and Brescia, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's always a nice, fast course. There's always high school meet there, too, so you can do a little recruiting while you're there. And, it's, uh, and that's always a fun one, too. So that's one thing about our sport is, uh, you know, it's not a one-on-one -on -one thing. In any given week, you're competing against Division One, Two, D Three, or NAI teams. Like it could be uh, some of the top in the nation and all the way down. Like it's it's pretty cool to, to to get to experience that. You know, not all not all the football and basketball and soccer teams necessarily get to experience that. They they might scrimmage, but they don't actually compete at the, at the same time. And it's kind of just a neat thing that's kind of unique to our sport that I love. Okay. Um, well, talking about uh, the recruiting aspect. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of kids, I, I think, well, once again, most of your kids are from Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky and Cincinnati is our, our, our biggest pool. Mm -hmm. uh, we get, a, and they're from all over the place. We have mm -hmm. as far west as like a, a Union County and Paducah, E-Town, mm -hmm. and then we've got a young man that graduated from Russell High School mm -hmm. on the other side of the state there. So it's they're from everywhere. We get a lot of kids from Cincinnati. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had some success uh, up there, but Cincinnati is such a huge area. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's uh, not too bad. We even have one young lady who's from uh, from Mexico. She's from uh, I think Saltillo, Mexico. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, but uh, she transferred in. So I, that that was more of a uh, not a I didn't recruit her from there. So we got lucky on that deal. But mostly just Kentucky kids. I mean, uh, for me, I relate to Kentucky kids really well because I'm born and raised here, especially mm -hmm. in this area. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the small town kids I tend to relate to very well because I, I was one of them. I am one of them, how, however you want to say that. But um, uh, we've, we've been getting up into Cincinnati a little more lately. Uh, I, we recruited a couple of kids from there, and then it kind of snowballs. So you get one or two kids from a high school, then they know somebody and they help mm -hmm. you recruit them and pull them in and mm -hmm. it kind of just migrates around. Uh, like it, it's kind of neat how all that works. Okay. So, um, how now, uh, we know NAIA, uh, you can pretty much recruit a kid no matter what grade he or she's in. Yeah, uh, essentially. <laughs> I mean, right. Uh, a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> that, right? uh, what? What would you say would be the youngest person that you've recruited so far? Uh, in some regards, one of one of my coaches, Betsy Evans, she, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, jokingly, when she had her first child, I said, "Here's scholarship right here," because <laughs> uh, she she's a machine. She's so fast, and I know her kids are going to be too. But in in, in all seriousness, I, 
I've, I've recruited some kids that were like sophomore, junior, but it's more so because they had a connection. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, we had a young lady uh, a few years ago, Taylor Godar, and I've been kind of recruiting her, her younger sister for a few years just because mm -hmm. of that connection. Mm -hmm. But mostly I, I tend to stick to juniors and seniors uh, mm -hmm. in any given year. So uh, at this point in the, in the recruiting, I've talked to a lot of juniors from last year that are seniors now. Right. But now I'm going to be working on the juniors for this year, for next year, if that makes sense. So that's, that's usually how I work with things, is that junior-senior class is what I focus on. But if it, I usually don't reach out to too many freshmen or sophomores, but if they reach out to me, then I will uh, talk to them a little bit more. Uh, just, you know, focus on right now, maybe get in their ear a little bit, but that's usually how I, I go about things. Okay. Um, well, can you tell us about some of your athletes? Um, sure. What any anything in particular? Or? Um, who who would you consider to be your your um, standouts right now, or the leaders of the of the team? Sure. So on on the guy side right now, our our top returner, uh, Dustin. He he's unfortunately not going to be able to compete this season. And one of our other seniors, Austin, is out with injury because he had to have surgery. Uh, so on our guy side, we're a little thin because our two of our top returners are going to be gone. Uh, in terms of returners, we still have uh, uh, Ben Peterson and Grant Carr. Uh, they're both going to be back, and I expect them to be in the top five. And I've brought in four freshmen this year. Um, and I, I, right now I'm expecting the team to be led by Justin Tabner. He's a freshman out of Cincinnati, uh, Amelia High School. And I also expect Wesley Qualls out of Bergen to be up there in the that top two or three. But uh, right now I'm kind of – we're still getting a feel for it, but – I might have four freshmen in my top five this year, mm -hmm. largely due to two of my seniors being uh, down. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll, you know, we'll get both of them back next year. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we can build on use this year to get those guys' experience, and mm -hmm. then next year can be, you know, that 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 time. And I hope I hope I'm not one of those coaches that's always in the next year. Right. But uh, I think I think we're going to be there in just another season or two on the men's side. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a couple guys on the team. Uh, Cody Cooper, who was the Mid-South Conference decathlon champion last year, he runs cross-country. Now, his goal is usually, Coach, I don't want to get last. But, you know, he's more of a jump-and-throws type guy. But in, in, in terms of our – and we've also got Eric Mills. He's one of our – he's a 400 runner that also runs. And they're, they're, two, of our, our, he's, they're two of our more vocal leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not necessarily up there in the pack, mm -hmm. but they're the ones you count on to be there every day to lead the team. And, mm -hmm. and we're really excited about all that. On the ladies' side, we have a newcomer. She's not new to the team. She ran track last season. She transferred in. Her name's Lucy Berlanga. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expect her to be uh, leading the, the ladies' team. Uh, she is a senior, and this is going to be her last season with us. But uh, Lucy's probably going to be leading, and Karina Egger, one of our returners, uh, we expect her to be right there with those one, too. After that, I have your guess is as good as mine as to who's going to be three, four, five, six, seven. We've got a lot of girls that are all packed in there together, which is a great problem to have, not necessarily knowing. So uh, we're really young on both sides. I have 24 on the roster, 25 on the roster. One's a, 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 a oh gosh, one's just helping me out. She's a manager. And uh, of the 24, we have 14 girls and 10 guys, and 10 are freshmen. So 10 out of our 24 are freshmen. Okay. And 13 out of 24 freshmen or sophomores. So we're really young. Right. And we all, I think we only have two juniors. So we're going to graduate a few and then have another year there to help rebuild. But that's what we're expecting to see. Uh, uh, Lucy and Justin are the two I'm thinking are going to be leading the team most of the season. Okay. Knock on wood, no injuries. That's always the – we've got to hope, right? Right, that's right, right. right. Well, um, let's talk about the miss out yes, for sir. a second. Um, what's the competition like there? So the, the Mid-South is, like I said before, it's leaps and bounds. It's growing and growing, getting better and better every year. Mm -hmm. On the guys' side, uh, this year I'm expecting it's um, – I, I obviously you never know who's going to come in or transfer in or out or what freshmen come in, but I'm kind of expecting to see something similar to the finishing – or what we saw last year. Mm -hmm. I think Shawnee State and Campbellsville will be right up there and then mm -hmm. Cumberland's and Cumberland – will be up there too, and uh, things are, are fairly set structured there. I'd be surprised to see much difference from what, how things finished last year. Mm -hmm. But on the girls' side, Shawnee State's kind of a clear favorite. Mm -hmm. And then last mm -hmm. year, so uh, I'll, 
our pre conference preview meet, mm -hmm. our girls were like second or third. Mm -hmm. And there were six or seven, like uh, the second to sixth or seventh in the conference was mm -hmm. separated by just a handful of points. Mm -hmm. So the women's conference, it's kind of up in the air. Now someone may have brought in some new recruits or transfer that separates them out from that pack, but there's a large pack in that in our women's conference that, mm -hmm. you know, one bad race or one really good race could move you from a sixth place finish as a team to a third place finish as a team, and it's it's going to be a close one. But the uh, the conference is just getting so strong. Um, I'm really hoping that a, the Mid South can become what we usually refer to as a two bid league. So just like you see in the NCAA basketball tournament, there's open bids to the national tournament for those that don't win their conference tournament, and. We've been really close on a couple of occasions to getting extra teams into conf or into nationals than just the team that wins our conference. And I think if things go the way that we hope, we're going to see the Mid South getting a couple of teams into con or into nationals, uh, if not this year, but hopefully in the near future. Uh, that's that's something we've talked about a lot in, in, in coaches' meetings. We really want to push that. We really want to do whatever we can to get two teams to, to nationals and really solidify the Mid-South as a, as a cross-country conference, not just football and basketball, you know. Right. Uh, so we're, we're hoping to get there. Okay, so. okay. <clears throat> so now, um, the kids for cross-country, is it required that all of them run track and field or, and, and vice versa, if they're track and field, do they have to compete in cross-country? It, it's not required mm -hmm. by any means. Most end up doing so. Mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while, we, we've had a couple of kids that ran cross-country in the fall and then played mm -hmm. tennis in the spring in the past. Mm -hmm. But it's not required, but most end up doing it because they, they enjoy it. And usually if you do both, you do get a little extra scholarship money mm -hmm. as, as part of that. So whenever, whenever you say more money, I'll do it, right? That's usually <laughs> how that works. But uh, it, there's no requirement by any means, but it's encouraged, and you do get a little extra help from that. Mm -hmm. As far as the other way around, we've had a few athletes that ran distance in the past that may have been a soccer player in the fall. So they didn't run cross country, but they might come out and run the mile during uh, track and field. Mm -hmm. So usually we see dual sports uh, do something like that, but we've never really had a, any sort of a requirement, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Uh, but. I think right now, 100% of our cross-country kids also run track. Um, okay. That's not always been the case, but that's usually what you see. Okay. Yeah, because I did notice, um, and, and, and speaking to some administrators here at Georgetown, the great majority of the student body for the college are actually at student athletes. Yes, sir. And, and I'm assuming that that also includes JV athletes. As well. I, I believe so, yes. Yeah. And, uh, the, we, so, and that's something we've had. We've had a few kids that played JV basketball that also mm -hmm. ran track, and mm -hmm. uh, we've had uh, there's JV football, and we've mm -hmm. the, and I don't remember if they were varsity starters or JV or not, but we've always had a bunch of football players that also ran track. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the the cool thing about track is that it does it does so well, it lends itself so well to everything else, right. you know, staying in shape and just the. Even if you're jumping, the power that you need to develop to be able to high jump or long jump is very mm -hmm. conducive to what you're doing on the football field. Right. Or if you're playing soccer, you can come out and sprints or distance are very conducive for soccer. So mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, highly encouraged that we have the dual athletes. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's awesome. But uh, and you're right, Georgetown is. There's a lot of athletes here. Uh, it's uh, very athletics driven in that regard. But um, it's uh, also really it, it's really enjoyable from my viewpoint as a faculty member because I love sports so much. And uh, a couple years ago, when the the basketball team uh, unfortunately, you know, a last second shot, they they lost the national title to a last second shot. And I just remember, you know, I've grown up all my life watching sports, and I've never felt. It, 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 it hurt me like on the inside so bad just because I knew those guys, you know, and I know those players, and it's just oh, it just it was awful. Like I've, I've been fans of sports my whole life, and a loss never hit me as bad as that one. And that's one thing that's cool about our campus is you do see a lot of all a lot of the athletes out and supporting each other. The soccer scrimmage is going on right now, and I think half of my cross country team is out there with a flag, waving it, cheering, probably heckling the other team. But, uh, <laughs> But it, uh, hopefully in good fun. That's right. uh, hopefully. But that's one cool thing about Georgetown with that, with all the 
all the sports are there, and uh, for the most part, people are supporting each other, and it's just a, a cool environment on campus. Okay, okay. Well, Coach, um, as we get ready to wrap up, yes, sir. Um, can you give us um, an outlook or a, a synopsis of how things went for you last year, especially sure. near the end of the year? Um, and then I've um, got one more closing thing um, for you after you answer this. Yes, sir. So on the, on the ladies' side last year, we started out really strong out of the gate. Mm -hmm. And we were in, finished in the top two or three at our conference preview meet. Mm -hmm. And then we, we, I think we peaked out a little early and we struggled, limp, kind of limped across the finish line at the end of the season. So we're hoping this year with, uh, we got a few bunch more freshmen in. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm hoping this year with a few changes to our training schedule that we can push that peak back to when it's supposed to be at conference. So I'm hoping that I've made the proper, you know, changes on my end. Because that's, that's mainly on me. Like, that's something that I've got to get figured out. And if they follow what I say, we should be hopefully peaking a little closer to the conference meet and not early. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys' side, we kind of, it was a little bit opposite. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we had a rough start. We had some injuries. We had some ineligibility issues. And then we got stronger as the season went because mm -hmm. we got the injuries fixed. We got the eligibility issues fixed. And then we were doing a little bit stronger near the end. Mm -hmm. And... We didn't. We had no seniors last year, so okay. everything we have coming in is all all new. So we have pretty much the exact same team we had last year on both fronts, mm -hmm. and with uh, uh, and we're gonna with all whatever freshmen we have added in. So we should be stronger as a whole, top to bottom. And I'm hoping to see a couple of spot increases at our conference meet this year, and keep continuing that up. And hopefully, if we do become a two bid league or it, even if we're still in one bid league, maybe we can get up there and get our first time as a team to nationals. We've taken lots of individuals, but we've never gone as a team, and that's what I really want to do. It should be awesome. Okay. Well, um, final, um, the final thing, Coach, uh, as we wrap up, uh, we definitely want to thank you very much for taking this time out with us. Um, we want to give you an opportunity to give uh, some people a uh, shout out and uh, you know especially those who, who might have had some type of impact on you sure. um, you know as a coach or uh, as a teacher or as a person in life yeah so uh, obviously my parents couldn't be here, wouldn't be here if they hadn't encouraged me throughout uh, even my sister I have an older sister and I, my god I never wanted to I always had to do better than what my older sister was doing <laughs> So she pushed me, even even if it was that that frustrating uh, uh, dynamic there. And then my aunt Judy, uh, she's been like a second mom to me my whole life. I couldn't be there without her. And then as far as my coaches, uh, I know Danny Simpson was my coach at, in Harrison County, and and Doug Keaton was his assistant. They were my first coaches. They're the ones that talked me into running cross country in the first place. And and Robbie Walker, he's my track coach. Uh, uh, the, if I could be, you know, half of who he is, it would be fantastic. And then Todd McDaniel, who was my coach here, and he's the one who gave me the opportunity as an assistant as soon as I graduated. So my whole uh, uh, transition from being an athlete to a coach was all facilitated by all of them, but especially by Todd there for giving me the shot, if you will. Uh, so if it wasn't for any of them, uh, we wouldn't be there. And, and obviously without uh, the big man upstairs, none of this would have been possible to begin with. So you always have to... Uh, uh, give a shout out to God for, for uh, blessing me with everything, like be it, be a, being able to teach, coach, and just get up and walk around every day. It's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute blessing. Okay. So. Well, well, Coach, we definitely, once again, thank you very much for taking this time out yes, sir. And, and talking to us. And, I appreciate uh, it. Thank you. We, we hope that a lot of people from around Kentucky, the United States, and even the world uh, will. Uh, get a chance to look at this and, and uh, wonder what they need to do in order to come to Georgetown. Or That's right. Them. Absolutely. Just get online. My email address is on the Georgetown College Athletics page. Uh, and feel free to drop me a line anytime. I'll, I'll be on there. I get, get a lot of emails, so I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. I promise. <laughs> It'll be okay. Um, and my office phone number is also on there, too. Feel free to give me a call. I'm not in there that often, but leave me a voicemail, and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much, Coach, and uh, we hope that you have the uh, 
the, the greatest season ever this year. I hope so too. And that you and your team are able to meet all of all of his goals. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right.